Welcome back to Minehead's Friday Darting Marathon. Hope you were enjoying that little bit of MMM bop. I knew that would make Chris Murphy laugh. We'll let you in on that little joke when we get started with Martin Schindler. Vincent van der Voort. This will be a good game, and we've got some good insight in this game because Vincent's got an excellent record against his opponent. He hasn't been defeated by Martin in a while. But we have four matches left for you before we let you all go and watch a certain football game, if that is your chosen vocation for your Friday night. But so far, so good for Reds Bar on Friday. It's been dramatic. We've seen a dominant display from Chris Dobie just now. But now, it's the Netherlands versus Germany. Yeah, I am mindful of the fact, Paul, that not all of our viewers will be English or England fans. So to them, I say, come on, England. But it is. Are you saying that to all of our American fans, too? <laughs> it is a Dutch destroyer against the wall of Germany and as you said he's been destructive at a five match winning streak that stretches back to 2019 for Vincent van der Voort against Martin Schindler who's only ever beaten Vincent once before and it was so long ago it was in a tournament that doesn't even exist anymore the UK Open qualifiers that used to count towards the Pro Tour but not the Players Championship rankings so winning one of those would be no good if you want to qualify for this can we explain the joke then? Yes, let's. MMM Bop, the famous Hansen classic, which Vincent van der Voort seemed to have a word with Schindler about, like, is this your choice of music when they walked on? Uh, but it was so cold because one of the markers, the PDC officials, Owen Binks, we were doing a little game at a Pro Tour event, finding out what was number one on the day we were born, and Owen Googled his, went, I'm not aware of the song, but... It's called MMM Bob. And we were all in fits of laughter. Yes. Because he wasn't aware that it's called M Bop. So forever, when that song is played, I will be reminded that Owen Binks. Well, just doesn't know anything about music. And he won't be happy with sharing that story with the world, but never mind. Well, he thinks Coldplay are better than you too. And Oasis. Yeah. When he said they were better than you two, he meant us two. Mine's Lady in Red. That's in red. Mine's Bright Eyes by Odd Garfunkel. Now, Schindler's eyes will be very bright if he takes out this. Oh, that looks nice. Bright Eyes, in fact. He takes an early lead, does Shindy, who has had a very good season, averaging over 95 for the year. Played 136 games. He's been to a final, narrowly missed out on getting that first senior title, losing to Michael van Gerwen and Niedenhausen back in March. But he has made other semi-finals as well. Do you get the feeling, Murph, he, he didn't take any of those semi-finals to a, that he lost to a last leg decider? And the one that probably hurts him the most is that loss to Boris Koltsov in July because he lost that 7-3 and averaged 83. That one probably stings a bit. Yeah, I think he is a player who, again, is awaiting his next obvious step in World Darts and that would be going on to win some kind of senior title, wouldn't it? Vincent van der Voort, of course, has done that, but it's many moons ago now. The last one was a Euro Tour event in 2014. Yeah, eight years ago. Well, eight and a half years ago. You went deep in that one yourself. Schindler going deep into this checkout. In fact, he takes it out. Did Vincent van der Voort beat me in that tournament? I thought Caven beat you. Was it? Does that all right? Maybe he did beat you, yeah. Well, I think they were both in the finals. You so should know better <laughs> than me. Oh, he's definitely beaten me in Austria. It's always an interesting challenge when you play Vincent because he's quick, he's got a presence and you're always on edge about the fact that if something displeases him, he will tell you. Sorry, I was too busy googling what was number one when Martin Schindler was born. What is it? 
It's an absolute belter, Paul. What year was it? 1996. He was born in 96. I was working during Euro 96. Uh, is it is it a dance song? Is it uh, a Brit pop song? It is the song of 1996 that you would first think of. Something by Oasis. No. We could be here a long time. Put me out of my misery. Well, let's see if Martin Chindler puts Vincent out of his misery in this leg. Well, now he needs a treble. And he's not going to get it. And Vincent can half the deficit. Two nines. Well, Vincent has got every right to be castigating himself and saying, why am I doing this? Because he could well be 3-0 down. And he is, thanks to that really good anchor dart from Martin. Halfway point against one of his nemesis or nemesis? Yeah, well, after three legs, Martin Schindler is exactly where he would want to be. By the Spice Girls. I don't know if that was number one in Germany, though. Yeah, I didn't go that far, Paul. Vincent van der Voort. He's getting a bit of a, a dose of his own medicine here, isn't he? Having had that excellent winning streak against Schindler. Finds himself in trouble. What do you make of Vincent's career and where it's at right now? Because... He did label himself a couple of years ago as a bit of a darting mercenary. He, he plays for money, he plays for his family. I think if titles come, it's a bonus, but ultimately he's a money maker, isn't he? He's a money player. He is. But he's more than capable in a tournament like this, where a lot of the top seeds and top ranked players have fallen, to go and have a run. And I just wonder for some of the players that are those more journeyman type performers actually having seen what's unfolded might have just created a little bit of an extra heavy burden yeah maybe well he looks like he's almost resigned to his fate here nothing's going right for Vincent van der Voort everything's going wrong we were talking about uh, 14 12 15 13 so he's on a sequence. We just, I suppose for us statisticians who like sequences, he needs to go in the other direction. So he needs the 11 and the 10. He's doing very little wrong. Even when he has a bad start to this leg, he rescues it with a maximum. And if he backs that up with another one, he'll be on double 12. And there'll be nothing that Vincent can do about it. Apart from the fact that he's left 120, of course, he's going to have to take it out. You know, the average has dropped to 106 now, Martin. Shocking. I still maintain that Van der Voort's got to take this 120. Can he? Will he? Oh, no! He shouldn't have been anywhere near that flight. And it skews off into the single one, giving Schindler a chance for 5 0. He might go eight here for tops. High wide and not particularly handsome. I tell him he said that. That's what he was trying to do. And you just never know. The fight back might just start now. How important for Michael Van Gerwen is it that? Vincent's still competitive and on tour because some people really do need an ally on tour someone who they can have dinner with someone they can travel with someone they can bounce off no matter what their own results uh, I always used to say that about Wes Newton and Barry Bates they may not have followed each other results wise but it was always important for Wes to have Barry to bring him 
back down to earth or potentially just to give him a laugh at the end of the day when it was a bad day. Yeah, I think he's got a good team around him anyway, Michael Van Gerwen, so maybe less so these days. And there is an argument that maybe Vincent van der Voort has kind of sacrificed a little bit of his own preparation for Michael van Gerwen. They've been excellent friends, haven't they, throughout the darting careers, but Vincent is a fantastic player in his own right, and that should never be forgotten. Yeah, I agree with that. And he's a fabulous player. And he hasn't done that badly this year. He did make the semi-finals in the Czech Darts Open. Yeah, he's not some kind of sidekick, and he was in danger of becoming a side show in this match, but suddenly the tungsten tide could turn because Van der Voort has just broken through, and from 4-0... He could very quickly find himself just one leg behind Martin Schindler here. He has got longer legs. Should be easier to catch him. Got his own dart shop as well in the Netherlands, hasn't he? Something he opened a few years ago. He was very proud when that opened. I remember seeing the photographs and reading the press releases. Still maintain he's the funniest man I've ever met who tells jokes in a second language. Spend time with Vincent for half an hour and honestly you walk away with sore ribs. He is hilarious. As well as being mega serious when it's game time. He's had, had his moments on the hockey as well, Vincent van der Voort. Remember he was taking a real towel in against Gary Anderson at the World Championship didn't win a leg until the final set and then when he did he stood tall and proud with his arms flexed like the Angel of the North didn't he in front of the dartboard it's quite the wingspan as well but look at the concentration of those darts together extraordinary from Shindy now what he wants to do now is concentrate two darts on that little red button to have a shot at 32 to get himself within one leg the next round that's all right but that one's not Sorry, 60 36 double eight we didn't need to see the dart we just saw the reaction from Vincent van der Voort that told us everything yeah reaction calm right there let's see what the reaction is of Schindler on double six. It's very, very good. 5-2. And how long has it been since his last win over Vincent? A long time. Yeah, almost five years. It was Feb, Feb of 2018. UK Open qualifier. Vincent van der Voort has beaten him five times since. I'll be fascinated to know if that is in the mind of Schindler because he's known for quite some time that he's playing Vincent that's the beauty of this tournament ever since the last players championship of the season and that was back on the 5th of November so they've known for best part of three weeks that they were going to play each other did Schindler think at one point oh I wonder when was the last time I beat Vincent it was a while ago so in his preparation for this, he's, he's probably thinking, well, I want to get a win against him. But he wasn't really a proper dart player at that point, was he, when he did last beat him? He was still doing the door at the European Tour event. Yeah, that's true. And just to give you an insight into what some dart players are like. I remember when I drew Terry Jenkins at the World Championship in 2010. And I knew for about three weeks before the game. I had a picture of Terry next to the board the whole time. On the board. If he was on the board, I'd have missed him. Well, if Schindler hits this, it's all over. Redemption. The five years of pain against Vincent van der Voort, a man who himself has played through the pain barrier for about five years. He elongated his career. He elongates the match. Glorious. When your opponent is sitting there waiting to finish the match off and you take out that 68 and 2, that's a world class finish. 
And it is a break, so it's still game on here. You have to say as well, Paul, credit to Vincent van der Bolt for the way he has fought through the the ailments that he's suffered. He's had a bad back for, for many years, had to change the way he stands because leading forward so much would only accentuate the pain. Yeah, Martin doesn't have that trouble. He has to lean up. But he is a married man now, as Shindy got married this year. Life is good. He's definitely trending in the right direction in the last couple of years. He's very high up on the Pro Tour order of merit, so he's looking good already for next year's match play and next year's Grand Prix. Yeah, you like to see him in everything. And Vincent is one of those players who just seems to always sneak in one of the last couple of spots, doesn't he, for most majors. They might be, be passing each other on the motorway a little bit at the minute. They're in the same sort of vicinity, the same jurisdiction, but you, you know that Schindler's going a little bit faster. And that Van der Voort may just be slipping into a different gear, but I sincerely hope that players of the same ilk of Van der Voort, and him himself, of course, have more stories to tell. Well, it's a story over. Players' Championship Finals 2022 for Van der Voort. It was almost over by virtue of a brilliant bullseye finish from Schindler, but was it a mistake to go for it? It's only a mistake if you miss the 25. Dolby didn't miss it, he took it out. Dolby won. Schindler hasn't yet. That's now three match darts missed. He was 4 0 up in this game. Double 10. More match darts incoming for Martin. Martin, you require eight. Double 2. And he still hasn't got it done. That's now six match darts. Three different visits, and now another leg ensues. And how confident is Schindler going to feel now, throwing for the match at 5-4 up? Just to uh, feed your narrative a little more, Paul, Raymond van Barneveld has now been beaten. Semi-finalist at the Grand Slam of Darts last week, 6-4 by Belgium's Kim Hybrick, well, who averaged one, in three figures. That was one heck of a fixture anyway. I mean, on paper, that looked very enticing but there you go three of the Grand Slam semi-finalists gone so left on the main stage Michael van Gerwen against Ryan Meikle Dave Chisnell against Niels Donneveld and Luke Humphreys against Nathan Rafferty well, here Luke, on Luke Humphreys is toast <laughs> if you're talking about semi-finalists of the Grand Slam Luke Humphreys might, might as well not even throw here on the uh, Stage two, Johnny Clayton, John O'Shea, Matt Campbell, Steve Beaton, and Gabriel Clemens, Gary Anderson still to come. Honestly, if Luke Humphreys loses today, somebody's dropped a rabbit's foot. Van der Voort is still fighting, and he's first to a finish here. There is no way that Schindler should lose this game but he could and if Van Gerwen and Humphreys both have the shots on the first match on the main stage we'll, we won't have any of the top five in the world in the tournament after round one so who's the highest ranked James Weir would be number six, six yeah one four six to get to six for Martin Schindler who's had six match darts already And he'll be feeling like Vincent van der Voort is 6-6-6 for him. This would be an absolute rip-roarer. 60 bull. Bull! Well, Martin's already missed. Six starts for the game. And he's not going to get a better chance than this. Finally, finally Martin Schindler gets over the line. He raced into a four-leg lead against a man who's been his darting nemesis.
for the last five years and it looks like the wall might be crumbling as the Dutch destroyer bounced back by virtue of taking advantage of six missed match darts from Schindler but he gets over the line in the end it was actually a pretty decent display from Schindler as well he goes through to the second round posts an average of 102.55 and will be in action tomorrow